thank you for inviting. The main idea of my presentation is to show how two different architectural fictions may stem from the same historical fact, or at least what is widely considered a fact. And I widely, um, I'd like to discuss two different um, uses and limitations into two parallel yet distinctive narratives of modernism. Both of them concern the relationship between modern architecture and history, and belong to the project of linking the former with the past. Uh, and more specifically, to the distant, the prehistoric past. The first is located in the central, let's say, scene of modern architecture, that is the West. And for this, I think I could not choose other figure than Siegfried Gideon. Um, space, time, and architecture, architecture you and me, and especially its late work, the eternal present, the beginnings of architecture, are the works that show uh, the, more explicitly his attempt to provide modern architecture with the past a very selective and strategically applied past. If the one side is the West with its widely published magazines and books, the second uh, is its periphery, the branches of modern architecture, sometimes hostile to their fathers, that seek to enforce their importance and demonstrate their originality through arguing about their national and authentic character. For this, I will focus on a representative figure of uh, Greek modern architecture, which is the point I wish to make like, lies in the paradoxical character of both these attempts. The first one is a fictional construction that is based on abstraction and visual similarities, while arguing for primeval and universal bonds. The second tries to oppose the first, actually the one where it stems from, and is based on the still influential, unfortunately, ideological constructions of nationalism. Um, in the eternal present, Gideon actually uh, converted archaeological and architectural surveys of Egyptian antiquities and classical Greek and archaic antiquities um, into abstract, almost diagrammatic paradigms. Uh, through this process of abstraction and due to the remoteness of antiquity, his examples were converted into archetypes keen to provide a kind of historicity for the modern project. Eternal values were attributed to modern projects, saving them uh, from being ephemera and securing for them a place in history. Um, today I will use an example not from the eternal project, present, but from architecture you and me. And I'm referring to Gideon's concern about uh, the first house. Gideon is seeking for a kind of a more epistemological justification uh, than imagining primitive huts. Uh, therefore he turns to archaeology which provides him with the necessary evidence to argue that it all started with a circular house. Um, so this is a quote in Architecture You and Me that says, uh, at the very beginning of architecture, the paramount type was not the square house, but the curvy linear one. Um, why Gideon is preoccupied with the round house? Apart from the evident historiographical interest, he wants to construct an analogy with round houses of modern architecture. And uh, in this he's very selective. He does not refer to any house of, uh, any round house of modernism, but he just picks Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, his argument is illustrated in this spreadsheet, where the plan of the Minoan house of uh, Hamezi, abstract and scaleless, uh, is just opposed with the Frank Lloyd Wright 1940 design for the McCord house, um, yeah. with a capital letter caption in between, which says, return to the primeval house form. What is only implied in his text is manifested in the spread, return. Thus, we can say that Gideon quite exclusively selects right and attempts to back him up with a historical buttress. Um, is frankly right just a paradigmatic case or a straight reference? Well, uh, Gideon only leaves us with a blurred idea of his intentions that nonetheless foretell the main argument of the eternal present. So, each of us carries uh, in his mind the results of 5,000 years of tradition, whether we can feel at ease in a Cretan Oval House or in right circular house, is a question that no, does not permit any logical discussion. Um, at first glance, there's nothing wrong with Gideon's parallel. Despite his selectiveness, he manages to make an analogy between two plants and argue about their eternal value. 
of course, there is an extreme process of abstraction that you can see in the images. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this, is either, uh, this is not the problem. Uh, the problem is that the whole construction of the argument is just fictional. And um, let me explain. explain why I'm saying that. Well, he probably picked up the story of the pre-primal uh, roundhouse from an archaeologist of the late 19th century, perhaps Robert Dines Pichte, uh, who had assumed that round-shaped uh, Greek prehistoric houses were actually the original type from which all uh, forms of human houses have uh, been evolved from. Uh, briefly, let's say that from, from the right you go to the uh, petal-shaped uh, megara and then to the uh, rectangular megara in order to go to the cross tile megara, uh, which is on the right. Um, Excuse me, this is Gideon? No. Oh. no. Who is this? Um, this is actually a collage. I mean, it's um, oh, 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 okay. sources. Um, so, I was saying, uh, what is uh, surprising is that uh, as early as 1921, uh, the Swedish psychologist, now I don't know if I pronounced that correct, correct Axel Bethius, maybe, often, uh, who was often quoted by Gideon and trusted, uh, especially for his uh, Roman uh, references, uh, had torn, up, uh, torn apart this myth. Bethius maintained that the primitive houses varied in shape and that there was no justification of any kind of evolution in those types. Uh, he concludes that the Megaron, uh, quote, the, horse, the horseshoe house and the oval house all seem to be independent types with no definite signs of derivation from one to the other. Uh, Gideon wrote to the issue 43 years after Bethius proved wrong his, uh, this evolutionary theory. Um, his insistence on uh, this kind of outdated idea does not mean that he was uh, unaware of uh, Bethe's position. On the contrary, we can assume that uh, it was not uh, convenient for him. The early 19th century theory offered him with uh, the historical evidence that he needed to characterize and describe a certain tendency in modern architecture, let's say, uh, frankly, right, roundhouses. Now, before turning the coin around to see what happens in the periphery, uh, I want to make clear that Okay, I may sound critical to the arbitrariness with which Gideon addressed his connections of modern architecture and archaic prototypes, but it doesn't mean that I'm trying to prove him wrong or useless. I mean, he represents a certain mentality of, uh, of his era, and he was very conscious of the process of abstraction that he was going through, and of the benefits that this process had for his arguments. As Socrates Georgiadis has uh, put it very clearly, the history that Gideon is writing or rewriting has all the signs of being a project, the project of the concept for architecture. So what I examine here uh, is the operative use of these archaeological references uh, that were used in uh, that were used as historical evidence to justify contemporary arguments. Uh, in other words, if in framing it in the symposium team, I examine how what he presented as historical facts were actually fictional constructions. Now, if we follow Gideon, we see that the modern project uh, was from the beginning connected with eternal values and therefore had universal characteristics. Let me now explain how the same argument can be transformed and, in, uh, and obtain new meanings, even opposing the original ones, in the hands of Greek modernists that sought uh, through a similar process to redefine their national identity in architecture. The Greek case is quite indicative, but of course, uh, similar phenomena uh, happened in Italy, in Turkey, and many other countries, peripheral or not. Gideon's project can be easily misinterpreted as an attempt to find the roots of architecture. Um, despite the fact was that Gideon was never tempted to connect was very tempted to connect modernism to the past, he did not speak about roots. Uh, it's symptomatic that instead uh, uh, he talks about beginnings. On the contrary, modernism in Greece, in architecture but in literature as well, was introduced hand in hand with an argument about roots in an attempt to associate the eternal values of the modern with the origins of the nation. Um, 
at this point, and before moving to architecture, it's worth looking into the interpretation of the root by Giorgio Seferis, poet, critic, and diplomat, and one of the main figures who laid out the ideological premises of uh, the modern Greek identity. He belonged to a larger intellectual group called the 1930s generation, who actually introduced modernism in Greece, uh, primarily in poetry. Seferis draws a parallel between poetry and the plant. If a plant, if it is a plant, he says, a poem interests us not only from the side of the fruit, but also from the side of the root. This is not just a wordplay, it is actually an element that is added to the thought of modernism. Um, Yanulopoulos notices that Seferis is introducing the root in such a manner uh, that anything which poets like uh, Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot, whose basic references, said about poetry, could also become uh, applicable to the idea of Greekness. He maintains that actually the idea of Greekness is an addition to the aesthetic and theoretical place of modern poetry. Paradoxically, um, it is through this concept of the root that Greek modernism was associated both with the idea of Greekness and the idea of internationalism. Uh, so let's move now and see how this mindset that was introduced in the Greek letters by Seferis was manifested in architecture. Aris Constantinidis was one of the most prolific modern architects and highly influential to the next generation. In fact, he still is. Uh, his work uh, is austere and mainly consists of private houses, uh, housing projects and uh, hotels. He served a very clear idiom of, uh, idiom of modern architecture that took highly into account the climate, the local materials and, the certain, and certain elements of the vernacular. Um, just in the same fashion in which modern architects of the same generation were doing elsewhere. The comparison with uh, Neutra is one of the common ones. Why his contemporaries, uh, Jonis and uh, his friends, let's say, imitated forms stereotypically recognized as Greek, 